All right, well, welcome everyone. I am JJ. Let's go ahead and tackle an example problem. So we're saying in this one, let's draw the shear and moment diagrams for the beam shown. And then our support reactions are given in our free body diagram. Um, I'm assuming that we can all find support reactions at this point. If that's a struggle, take a look back at previous problems. Um, rather than using the time in this video to refine these, look back in earlier stuff. Get caught up to speed on how do we even find support reactions before you try to tackle shear and moment diagrams. But let's jump in and go for it. We know 540 for AY, BY is 180. I left AX off because there's no X forces. We should be able to say AX is zero on that. Um, but if we're doing shear moment diagrams, from there, we would want to come in and start figuring out where do we section things out at. I work from left to right. We should always for shear moment diagrams. Anytime our loading changes, if we have a new load starting, stopping, a concentrated force, a couple moment, it's going to change our loading conditions. We need to make a new section. So as I leave A, nothing changes until I get to the middle of my beam, six feet in. That change means that one section needs to be between A and our midpoint in here. So one time we'll cut somewhere in between those two things, circle all the way back to the left edge of A. As we keep going from that midpoint though, nothing changes until I get to the end of the B, end of the beam at B. Um, so I make a cut somewhere in that region as well. Two sections I'll have to set up here. I'll get two sets of equations for shear and moment. We can tackle that. That means I need two free body diagrams as well. So let's just get our first one in here. My first interval, interval one. Interval one is really we're starting at A, so we'll say zero is less than or equal to our X distance, which is gonna be, we're making that cut somewhere before the end of our distributed load. So less than or equal to six. Or I, you could just say less than, I wouldn't mark you down, it's really the same thing from an engineering standpoint. Um, let's draw our free body diagram. So my free body diagram, I'm starting at A, I'm going out and making that cut before I get to the end of the distributed load. So we'll wiggle through there for our cut point, P. I know at A, I have AY 540 going up. My distance over to the cut point is X. Along the top, there's a rectangular distributed load. I don't know the width of that because it's as a function of X right now, but I do know the height in that entire range is 120 pounds per foot. That was given to us. The height doesn't change for that entire distributed load, so it's constant in there. And then you get in my shear. Shear causes, we always put in our positive assumption, causes a clockwise rotation about the uncut end. So our uncut end is here at A. To get a clockwise rotation about A, shear has to be going straight down, which is what we're showing in our picture here. V. If we had come the other way, shear would have to be going up to get that same thing. Equal and opposite as we move from one side of the cut to the next. It's just Newton's laws for how we move between those. But we'll pretty much always make that cut the right edge of our section, go back to the left with it. Um, we can also get moment. Moment should compress the top, which means it's trying to lift the edge we're looking at. To lift that edge up, it'd have to be going counterclockwise. So put in an M. We'll compress the top of our beam, spread apart the bottom of it. Um, I'm trying to get M and V as functions of x. I can do that by applying equilibrium. If I come in and I sum my forces in the y direction, I'm going to get 540 minus my distributed load minus my base times height. The base is x. My height is 120. So minus 120x minus my shear minus v is going to get me to zero. I can solve that entire equation for shear. I'm going to get that my shear, V, is, I'm just moving it to the other side, 540 minus 120X, which is logically, looking at that, I have like a Y equals MX plus B equation here. My slope would be negative 120. My intercept is 540. This is a linear function. So when I plot it, I need to plot just a straight line in this region at some angle in there. Um, let's check our boundary conditions. I want to say what happens at zero, what happens at six. So at x equals zero. If I put zero in for my shear equation, I'm going to get my shear is 540 minus 120 times zero. My shear is 540. So my first point that I want to come in and plot here is 540. We'll start there. 
Um, from there, I can say, what about my next point? How does it x equals 6? So at x equals 6, 540 minus 120 times 6 is going to get me that my shear is v equals negative 180. So I'm going from 540 down here all the way to negative 180 at about that point. Um, I know I have a straight line that connects the two of these, so I can just connect the dots here from 540 down to negative 180. And I'll fill in those points, 540, negative 180. Um, and that's my first section's shear diagram. From here, we're going to repeat that for a moment. So with positive going counterclockwise, let's sum our moments up about my cut point. Always about that cut point. Otherwise, I have to get my shear as a function of x included in there, and it just gets real messy. Um, but about my cut point, I have my internal moment m. Because it's a couple moment, it will show up in here. Um, my distributed load because of positive rotation. So plus force is the area, 120x times my distance. From P to the middle of that distributed load would be half of x. So times x over 2. My 540 would cause a clockwise rotation. So minus 540x equals 0. Um, if I solve that for my moment, I'm going to get that m is equal to um, negative 60 x squared plus 540 x. So again, let's check our conditions in here. Um, we can put in 0 and 6, and we might need one more point to plot. So let's find this. At x equals 0. My moment will be um, negative 60 times 0 squared plus 540 times 0. My moment is 0. At my next point, at x equals 6, my moment is going to get me negative 60 times 6 squared plus 540 times 6. My moment is 1080. Um, but I don't want to just straight connect those dots in here. I have, if I look at my function, this is a quadratic. Quadratic. So I need to figure out, do I have a local max or a min point in this region? Which, how do I find my local max or a min? If I have a function and I want to know where its maximum is or where its minimum is, I can take the derivative. The derivative will tell me the slope. At the max or a min of a parabola, that slope is going to be 0. So where the derivative of moment is 0, we can figure that out. So we want to say, let's set dm dx equal to 0. So dm dx is going to get me to negative 60 times x. Um, or bring that 2 down, we'd have negative 120x. Plus, removing the 1x we have, plus 540. Have I seen that equation? I arranged it a little bit different before, but it's our shear. 540 minus 120x. The derivative of moment with respect to x is always going to get us our shear. So really, all that I'm saying is, where's my shear zero? So let's come back up above and add that in. When v equals zero, I can solve this equation. That's dm dx, negative 120x equals 5, or, or 540 minus 120x equals 0. 540 equals 120x. My x has to get me to, um, where do I have it? 4.5 feet. 4.5 feet. Um, I could come in and label that. That's this point right here. From the left edge of my beam into this is 4.5 feet. Is getting me a zero shear. I did not label that at all at the right point. Um, that should be about here. Um, that is zero shear. Four and a half feet in there. Um, or a foot and a half from the end of my section. I have zero shear. That becomes important because that's going to come down and be a local max or a min point in my moment diagram. So I want to check that as well. At x equals or at yeah at x equals 4.5 is what we're getting from here at 
x equals 4.5. My moment, putting 4.5 into my equation, should get me into this equation, not the derivative. Should get me the maximum. My moment is 1215. So we're going to start at 0. We're going to make a parabola that increases up to 1215 and then comes back down. But this point right here, 1215. Um, let's move that to the other side. 1215. This point right here is 1080. Um, we're starting at 0 for this. That's my entire first interval. I could shade this in just to make it a little bit easier to read the graph. Um, Looks something like that. And I could shade in the moment as well. Um, but from here, I need to move on. That finishes that first section. I can work with the second one. So interval 2, interval 2. In here, we're going from, we pick up where we left off. So at least 6 is our x is less than or equal to x. But we end our beam in this interval. We go all the way out to 12 is less than or equal to 12. And x is still going to measure from the far left edge of our beam in here. We don't start measuring x from the midpoint. It's still the very beginning. But we're measuring at least into that middle of our beam where the distributed load ends. So our free body diagram should look like that. We'd have our ay is still 540. We would have our entire distance here. We know is x going out to our cut point, P. We have a distributed load on the first six feet of this. I know I'm at least covering six feet with this. So I can put in all six of these. Um, this distance is six feet. And my height is still the exact same, 120. 120 pounds per foot. At my cut point, I have the exact same shear moment, following the same positive sign convention. So shear going down, moment going counterclockwise. And I can apply equilibrium to find those. Again, as functions of x. So if I start and I sum my forces in the y direction, I have 540 going up. I have my distributed load coming down. So minus my base times height, but I know that base is six. I'm all the way past that. So base six times height, 120. That distributed load is not a function of x. When I want to get the moment, x will play into that. But for just force, I know the base of it. Uh, minus my shear equals zero. Or solving for shear, I'm going to get shear is negative 180. V equals negative 180. Um, that's a constant for us. Constant. Constant. So really, to finish my shear diagram, I can just make a straight line that goes over. Um, and that will get me my shear for our second interval. Um, negative 180 the entire time. Um, at the end, just to check it, my by was 180. It will push me from negative 180. Instantly, I jump back up and be at zero in here. I could close out that diagram if I wanted to. Um, that finishes my shear diagram. Let's do the moment. So we'll say with positive, going counterclockwise, sum up our moments about our cut point. Um, it's going to get me my internal moment, m, minus 540x, minus 540 times my distance is x. Uh, plus my moment from that distributed load. So plus force. My force is 100 and, or base times height, 6 times 120, times my distance. Well, I don't know this distance right here. Um, I know this distance is x, so I can write it in terms of x. I can go from my cut point to the left edge is x. And then coming back towards this to the cut, so minus the distance like double back x minus i come back to the middle three feet so x minus three would get me my distance from the cut to right here i can't directly say that because i don't know this distance it is somewhere between six and twelve um, but x minus three gets me there um, but this equals zero 
If I solve for my moment, I'm going to get that my moment is negative 180x plus 2160. Um, I get asked frequently in my class, couldn't we just take, if I know the shear is the derivative of a moment, could I have just integrated negative 180? And technically that does work. That's where this negative 180x comes from. What do we always forget in our calculus classes? I know I did this all the time. Technically, when we take an integral, we have that plus c term. That's where the 2160 is coming from. I would struggle to find the plus c. It's a doable thing. Uh, if we can find plus c, integrating might be easier. But we can also just set up the equation and solve for it. Um, 2160 is our constant that we're adding in here. Drops away when we take the derivative to get us just negative 180. But this works for us. And we can check our two boundary conditions, 6 and 12. So at x equals 6, my moment is going to be negative 180 times 6 plus 2160. My moment is 1080. m equals 1080. And what about at x equals 12, the right edge of our beam? So putting 12 in for here, negative 180 times 12 plus 2160, my moment is zero. So I'm going to go from 1080 and I'm just going to decrease linearly back down to zero on here and have a nice linear plot for that region. Um, notice as we did this, my shear picked up right where I left off in here. I ended my first interval at negative 180. I continued my second at negative 180. And that worked for a moment as well. We ended the first interval at 1080. We picked up at 1080 in the second one. Um, that will always be true for the shear unless there's a concentrated force that causes us to break the intervals. If there's a concentrated force, we'll immediately see a change in our values. If there is a couple moment for the moment diagram, we'll see an immediate change in our values. Otherwise, we we'll should pick right back up where we were before. Um, but hopefully this was a useful video for you. If it was, hit those like and subscribe buttons. Stick around. Um, watch some more videos. Let's get you an A with JJ.